Hi, my name is Matt, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to crack a router with WEP, WPA, or WPA2 encryption. And to accomplish this feat, we're going to be using a tool called Reaver, which performs a side channel attack on the Wi Fi protected setup, or WPS for short. Now, for those that don't know what the WPS is, without going into elaborate detail, it's basically the initial setup procedure used by home routers and small business routers. You won't find the WPS so much, however, in enterprise networks. Okay, so before I step through all this, the directions on how to perform this attack, let me first state that this presentation is intended for educational purposes only and should not be used for nefarious purposes. So don't go around, you know, cracking into your neighbor's routers. That'll be bad. All right. So first off, notice that I'm using Backtrack 5, which is a Ubuntu operating system with a bunch of software loaded into it, primarily penetration testing software, hacking software, and digital forensics software. So perfect for our needs. Additionally, I'm using VMware Workstation 8, uh, which is what I'm running Backtrack within, mostly for the purposes of recording this presentation. All right, so with that out of the way, Let's get to it. So first off, we're going to type iwconfig. Now iwconfig is not much different from ifconfig. The primary difference being the W, which stands for wireless. So we're looking at the wireless interfaces. Now a problem that we have with this list right now, which shows us the loopback and the Ethernet interfaces, is that VM Workstation views the Ethernet here as both my wireless and my wired network. Now, I don't have a wired network, but it's basically viewing as wired. That's an issue, and we're not going to be able to do this demonstration with it the way that it is, and there is no way of getting around it, except to use a USB wireless adapter. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in now. Give that a couple of seconds to boot in. We're going to confirm it's there, and it is. We now have our wireless LAN interface. So great, we have our wireless LAN interface, and it's running in managed mode, which is the default mode. But we want it to run in monitor mode, and monitor mode is just the more official way of saying promiscuous mode. Promiscuous mode is when your interface is running in such a manner as to observe all the network traffic going on around it, as well as to inject packets of your own device. So could be packets that you maliciously crafted, even, which we're going to get to eventually. So how do we set it into monitor mode? Well, that's pretty simple, actually. We just have to use a program called AirmonNG, and we're going to start it on the wireless LAN. And as you can see towards the bottom over here, it created a monitor mode enabled on MON0, which we can confirm by just typing in the command by itself. And there it is on the bottom. So great. We're in monitor mode, we're observing what's going on. We haven't crafted any packets yet, that's all good. So let's capture some of these packets, see what's going on. To do that, we could use Wireshark, but for the purpose of this demonstration, and so things are easier to look at, we're going to be using a, going to be using a tool called AeroDump NG. And we're gonna run it on the Mon0 interface that we just created. Alright, so here we see it populating a list of routers. These are all the routers within range of my USB Wi-Fi adapter. And let me explain to you what some of these columns mean before we proceed any further. So first off, we have the BSSID. That's just short for the Basic Service Set Identifier, which is just a glorified name for the MAC address. So that's the MAC address you're going to find on the back of your router or on the bottom panel if you go look for it. Additionally, we have the PWR, which is just telling us the signal strength. Uh, we would like a 50 or below. The lower the number, the stronger the signal. Anything higher than 50 or 60 is going to be kind of tough to crack. And unfortunately, most of these numbers are, but that's actually intentional for some of these because I want it to be a more realistic demonstration. These are actually routers that I have, and some of these are in the neighbors, but we're not going to touch those. Additionally, we see data which is telling us how much activity is going on on those routers right now. So, with the exception of Element over here, most of them are actually pretty quiet, which is surprising. I think there'd be more going on. 
We also see ENC for encryption, so we know if it's WPA, WPA2, WEP. Uh, OPN just stands for open, so there's no encryption standards being used. And we also have the ESSID, which is short for the Extended Service Set Identifier, which is just the identifying name of the access point for the router. So that's the name you give your router when you're setting it up. Or in the case of some of these, just the default name, like these homes over here. And lastly, although we're not going to be using it for this, a nice thing to point out is this station. Station is just the MAC address of the devices connected to the routers listed on the left over here. So these could be your laptops, your printers, or uh, your smartphones if you have it hooked up. So all right, it looks like we've collected enough here. So we're going to go ahead and stop it. So which one do we want to crack? You know, which one has the WPS that we want to attack? Well, unfortunately, AeroDump doesn't tell us that at all. Uh, we have a lot of router information, a lot of MAC addresses, but we have no idea what to target. We just have to try each and every one of them, and that would be rather time-consuming. Thankfully, Reaver, starting from version 1.3, and it's now at version 1.4 at the time of this video, um, includes a secondary tool called Walsh. And Walsh basically sends some packets to try and detect you know, does it use WPS, and can it leverage that for a side channel attack? It won't actually perform the attack, it's just going to detect it. So let's go ahead and run Walsh. We're going to run on the interface mon0 that we created. And I'm just going to ignore some error commands here, just so it's kind of cleaner to be read. So alright, it's populating a list here of all the routers that are WPS susceptible. Let's give it a couple seconds, see what we get. Alright, pretty good list. Makes up about half of what we found so far. It'll, it'll find a few more, but I'm going to stop it here. So, one of these routers that I'm operating is the Belkin C72 that you see here. You also see it up here. And it's running WPA2. So let's give that one a shot. So, we're going to go ahead and copy this MAC address. We're going to plug it into Reaver. Now, Reaver's the tool, remember, that's going to actually do the side channel attack. It's going to craft the packets. And the syntax for this is Reaver-I for interface, mod0, dash B for the BSS ID. I'm going to paste in that MAC address. And I'm going to throw in some VV for verbose, so you can see what's going on. This can take a few seconds. Right now it's trying to find the uh, channel that's being used by the router. Uh, the channels can actually change every, you know, periodically, depending on the router model, just for security precautions. Usually 1 to 13 is common, and ah, it looks like we found... yes. So it is trying its first pins right now, and it's not having any issues at all. You notice though it's kind of going a little bit slowly, about one pin per second there. Maybe a little bit worse than that. And we see some timeouts and some little errors over here. So, did we really succeed, or didn't we? Well, we actually did succeed here. I mean, it hasn't finished, but it's actually meant to run this slow. We can't get it to run much faster than one, maybe two, pins per second. And that's because the rate here, the bottleneck on these attempts, is actually the router itself. The router just simply can't process it all quickly enough. So it's not actually the computer that's holding us back. As for some of these error messages, um, that could be the fact that the manufacturer may have done some updates to detect that we were making too many attempts at the pin, which right now looks like it's pausing a little bit, so maybe it became all the wiser, because I've been doing this a lot today. Or it could just be the fact that the signal strength is rather low, and so it's not doing very well. Either way, there's lots of different reasons for it. And this was it. This is how you do the attack. If I let it keep running, it would solve it. Right now, it looks like we're on a receive timeout of courier thing, so it did detect what I was doing. And we could cancel it and come back in about five minutes, and it'll run without a problem. And Reaver itself will actually become smart enough to do that on its own when it detects it's doing that. And a nice cool thing here, too, is that you can go ahead and start it, and I ask you if you want to restart from a previous session, and you can say yes and start it back again whenever. And it'll also keep trying all the channels in case it gets changed. 
but that's it for the demonstration.